Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Touring the London Verse. I'm of course Scott B Gaming and today we'll be looking at a promotion which I know is quite popular with quite a few of you out there and that is Women's Championship Wrestling. They're based out of Canada, biggest women's promotion in the London Verse data. Hell of a roster, so let's get right stuck in with the covering all of this goodness. I didn't know what I was going to say there, but I've said it now. It's fine. As you can see, as usual, chosen James Avatar. The setting's right down the centre. Let's get stuck in. Okay, on the main page of the promotion, the main hub if you will, we can see that we're cult size, we're the ninth ranked in the starting data, so pretty good, pretty good, especially for a women's only company, not that there's anything wrong with that of course. Money, $5 million in the account, that's pretty good. Prestige, C-, minus Momentum, C. We have a television show and we also have pay-per-views every month. Now the television show is Women of Wrestling and that is tonight, I've simmed up to it remembered this time made the mistake i think a couple of episodes ago and forgot to do that but before we do that we're going to have a look at the roster okay and we start with adila baba now adila baba is supposed to be a very right-wing religious fanatic not to be particularly of any faith of her own faith because we're all accepting all encompassing in the london verse data we don't we're not prejudiced one way or the other that's just the kind of character she's playing okay she's 31 years of age age 31 years of age that's a mental thing to say 31 years of age excuse me she's a brawler she's uh, small and she's a mid card heel i actually do very much like uh, the character and i think considering that she's pretty good in terms of in-ring ability which is important in wcw she's actually going to do quite well for me i think if i was doing a long-term game as this company and she's also managed by amal darzi move on now to alexis young uh talent from Los Angeles, Japanese junior style, very small competitor. She's an opener, no gimmick needed. There's potential there, but not one of the competitors in this company that particularly grabs my interest, if truth be told. But again, certainly by no means bad, and she can get the job done in the ring. Speaking of Amal Darzi, he is the manager of Adila Baba. Um, not too bad on the, the microphone end of things, but, but not the best. But, you know, he does enough to get by for the purpose of managing uh, Adila Baba. Move on now to April Home, a skilled Canadian grappler. She's small in stature, upper mid card face, and got the fan zone gimmick. In ring wise, damn talented actually in chain wrestling and mat wrestling as well as submission. Ariel's not too bad either, and she's pretty capable in brawling. So she can very much do everything, and this is someone that I could see being a potential threat for the main event stars. Now, don't get me wrong, the main event stars in WCW are very good, and they are deserving of their place on the card, but April Home is certainly someone who could be mixing it up with the likes of them. Move on now to Ariel Summers, 29 years of age, upper mid-card face, got the franchise player gimmick, more of a heelish character. Um, again, not too bad in the ring, and someone much like April Home, who could, probably could be competing in the main event scene. Now, for my money, out of all the women's promotions in the Londonverse, I think there's three, four, I was going to say three, yeah, because we've got Joshi in Japan, WCW, we have Showtime, and we have Pure Heart Wrestling. So, yeah, four starting all women's promotions. WCW are my favourite just because the level of talent on their roster. And that, having said that, I really like Joshi as well. Showtime have their qualities, and they all have their qualities, but if someone put a gun to my head, which is your favourite, I would say WCW. Okay, so I've lathered my way through that. Let's move on now to Caroline Quaid. Now, Caroline Quaid is. Quite talented, but not as talented as a lot of the others. But then again, she's bringing a more cruiserweight style to to the ring. She's a low mid card. Got a show stealer. I imagine her uh, using like gymnastic ability to do flips in the air and kind of get her her way over with that, with a, almost like a spot monkey style, or spot monkey in terms of women competitors, because there wouldn't be as many doing the kind of crazy stuff that uh, Caroline Quaid does. So. She, again, has a lot of potential for the future and uh, someone that would be very interesting to keep an eye on and see how well she develops. Move on now to Christina Garda, the New York Knockout. Very much a feisty, hard-hitting MMA crossover style of worker here and she is more proficient in brawling, although she's not too bad in technical, um, but the badass gimmick and she brings uh, more of an edgy character to WCW than some of the other cookie, cookie cutters? Cookie cutters that we've seen. Um, so for that reason alone, she's different enough and she's got enough talent to keep her relevant, although she is only an opener on the roster. Probably could get her up to mid-carder, I think. I don't think that would be out of the question. Move on now to Desert Rose. Now, Desert Rose is a cruiserweight as well, 30 years of age. She's part of the tag team The Wild Vines with Heather Luck. 
I'm not crazy about this character. She's certainly not bad, but when you've got like Caroline Quaid who does what she does but better and is younger, it's hard to kind of give Desert Rose a fair a fair crack at things. But having said that, if she was in another female company, she'd actually be probably one of the most talented workers there. So she's worthy of her place on the roster, but I don't see any main event stardom in her future. Daredevil gimmick though, again, so it's interesting. Now this is Mrs. Wrestling, Ella May Pierce. She is uh, originally from California. She uh, pretty much has been around WCW since the start of things. She's 40 years of age. She retires pretty damn quickly in every game. So it would be quite fun to do a retrospective mod where we can see Ella May Pierce coming into her prime and really cementing women's wrestling on the map. I mean, I have ideas for women's wrestling in Europe, which I think will be quite fun when I introduce that in a further edition of the game after the initial release. Um, but Ella May Pierce, as far as North American wrestling, was North American wrestling. Um, for, for the women at least and she's fantastic still in the ring now and it's always a shame to see her step aside but with the ability that she has as uh, in basics and psychology she could be a, a damn fine road agent as well so someone who's always likely to find work and stay around and relevant with the company move on now to Isla Porter the she ailed female now why I like Isla Porter is because again she's got a different look about her with the tattoos more of a kind of badass almost like a Stone Cold Steve Austin s character and I think that'd be really really fun to book in a in a women's promotion um yeah I, I just think that she would work very well in the company and again someone who I could see eventually mixing it with the main event scene although her in-ring skills are a little bit lacking unfortunately but certainly a fun character Move on now to Faith Richards, 31 years of age, main eventer, girl next door. Again, she's one of the more seasoned heads in the WCW roster. Chain wrestling, mat wrestling, good. Brawling is pretty decent as well. All in all, not bad. In fact, truth be told, there are some upper mid-carders that I'd prefer to be in the main event position as opposed to Faith Richards. But again, she can certainly mix it up with those likes. So she's not wasted in here. Fiona Nikwa. Now, Fiona Nikwa... Uh, entertainer, 35 years of age, main eventer, heel, diva, if the look didn't say at all. You might recognise this render from um, another mod, but uh, yeah, it was originally for, for the Fiona Nikwa character. She is pretty damn good. Uh, not the best in ring, but she's, you know, brawling, chain wrestling, mat wrestling are good, and she's got a lot of entertainment. She's someone that could do very well in Showtime Wrestling, but WCW is where she's currently working for. Working for? Yep, plying her trade. You know, all that good stuff. Gabe Mikiewicz. Now, Gabe Mikiewicz is the owner and founder of Women's Championship Wrestling. Although, because I'm now playing the role of owner for this video, he doesn't really have anything to do. Which is a shame. But, you know, then be the breaks, unfortunately. But, there we go. Move on now to the other half of the Wild Vines tag team. And that's Heather Luck. Um, Heather Luck is a... I just poked myself in the eye there. I so, don't know why I did that. Um... Heather Luck is a happy-go-lucky character and someone who also presents potential for the future. She's got decent mat wrestling and chain wrestling and again, all the you know psychological aspects you'd want to be good, they are good. So, while she's a tag team wrestler at the moment, potential breakout single star, I think, wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility. Move on now to the Swedish brawler Helga Larsson. Um, the rugged lass from Sweden. She is um, a bit of a beast. She's not um, the most beastly in this uh, in this game. We'll see her uh, in about five people's time. Five people's time? Five characters' time when I go down the list. So that might give you a bit of an idea who it is. But she's decent. She's a tomboy character. Um, very brutish in demeanour. And I think that's good. Much like we saw with... Um, let me see, Christina Gardner and Isla Porter. She's kind of got the other side of the not too girly girl coin, and I think that's important for diversity and like, you know, it makes it more interesting. She don't want all the characters to kind of have the same vibe. So, move on now to India. Now, India has got a pure Resu style. She was grow grown up uh, fascinated with the uh, Japanese style of combat, and she's okay. Again, she brings something different to the table that not other, not many other people can do on this roster. In fact, I. They say she's the only one that can do the pure wrestler style to a decent level. Uh, so she's quite hard hitting, no gimmick needed. Um, looks can be deceptive, I think, because deceptive, <laughs> deceptive. Because looking at her, you wouldn't think she could kick your ass, but she she can. So you know, I'm happy with that. I'm happy she can kick my ass. I don't know what I mean by that. James avatars myself. Move on now to the Boston Celtics fan Casey Callahan. 
uh, Boston native, uh, if you couldn't tell. Uh, I know that there's certain Mr. 2K or Astil's not a fan of this character, but yeah, it's all right. We get on with things. And um, anyway, she's a main eventer, franchise player, very good in the ring. Not the best, but she's you know near enough there to be honest with you. And someone that you could have a lot of fun with doing matches with. I think there's a lot of talent in this promotion around the top end and towards the mid card and lower end to a lesser extent. So you're not going to struggle for ideas, I don't think. And she's a cruiserweight as well, so fun things. Kelly Pascal is the announcer. Now this lady right here, Karma Kills, is a beast. She's a middleweight in size, which is by far the biggest on the roster. She's a brawler, upper mid card heel, monster. She could probably kill everyone. Uh, for, you know, menace for a woman, B+. Plus. It's pretty damn good. 33 years of age. I think a lot of people would want to push her to main event status right away, probably give her the title. And I can't blame them, because I'd probably want to do the same thing. So, very fun character to have. And the fact that she isn't already dominating... Well, she is dominating, but she's not got the title and main eventing. So there's still room to, you know, have her go further up the card, which is great. Move on now to Lana Cortez, the Puerto Rican. She's small in stature, upper mid-card heel, seductress. A few piercings there interesting hairstyle with the waves and stuff um in ring pretty good i believe she is a tag team partner she has a tag team partner even maybe not maybe i was talking about yes las carreras i was right with perez mendoza who's going to be seen a little bit later yeah again nice bit of diversity to the card but she's a part of a very interesting tag team and uh yeah single stardom Possibly not, 34 years of age, getting on a bit, but, you know, not someone that you're going to get rid of. Lachey Peterson, um, 27 years of age, mid-carder, heel, again with a franchise player, basically she's up her own ass. She's a bit of a little brat, to be honest with you, when she doesn't get away, but that's more character than backstage. Brawling's pretty good, Matt Wrestling's okay, there's... Elements there that you could see leading to her becoming a good single star in her own right. And I think she will be. But for now, very valuable in the tag team division. Move on now to Lauren Downs. Lauren the Days Downs. She is a opener, daredevil. A bit like Desert Rose, except um, Lauren Downs is a singles competitor, I think. She's originally from Chicago. Uh, aerial and flashiness are actually, actually very good, and basics and psychology are pretty much there as well. She's 27 years of age, so for someone who's an opener, you could really see her go quite far in this company, I think. And WCW is the place for it, where they, they're more focused on the in-ring action side of things as opposed to Showtime, where they're, they're looking at more the camera aesthetics and the, the angles and, you know, that, that stuff. Having said LMA Pierce is Mrs. Wrestling, this is the new... Mrs. Wrestling. Welcome to Lindsay Adorn. Part of the famous Adorn family out of Canada, Lindsay Adorn is the WCW World Champion. She's a main event heel bitch. Everything she does in the ring is fantastic. She's 29 years of age, so you know, her days aren't, her best days might not be over yet, and um, a perennial threat to everyone on the roster. Now, what I think would be quite interesting for an angle down the road would have Karma Kills go through everyone. Karma Kills is also a heel, I believe. Karma Kills go through all the faces, basically demanding, well, her work demands a title shot. Lindsay Adorn is almost afraid. The only person that Lindsay Adorn's ever been afraid to step in the ring with, Karma Kills, and then turn Karma Kills' face. Or, alternatively, have Lindsay Adorn put on a real fighting effort and turn her face in the process of doing that and have Kills stay a heel. I think that'd be an interesting storyline personally. I'll let you guys decide below. In fact, if you got to this point in the video, because it's probably going to be a long one, let's be honest, comment down below. Do you think that in that situation I should turn Lindsay Adorn heel or or sorry, should turn Lindsay Adorn face or Karma Kills face? Interesting. Question of the day. Let's go with it. Move on now to Mimi LaRue. Now Mimi LaRue is a very small worker, mid card heel, egomaniac, bit up her own bottom. She is you know, not great in the ring, if I'm being quite honest with you. And uh, one of my least favourite characters on this roster. I was try I tried to big myself up for, you know, giving you know a good breakdown of what she can and can't do. And yeah, I just thought, actually, I'm not a massive fan of her. But, you know, she's here. Miscreant. 
one half of the WCW World Tag Team Champions alongside Miss Demeanor. Uh, very talented, really talented actually. Chain wrestling and mat wrestling, good. Brawling, good. And all the you know psychological aspects are pretty damn good. And she's entertaining, so she's an all-rounder and she's in the tag team division. But she's classed as a main eventer, so there's the dilemma for you. I think she's significantly better than her tag team partner, Ms. Demeanor. So, do you want to keep them as a tandem? Do you want to separate them? What do you want to do? Ms. Demeanor. One half of the Little Shop of Horrors tag team. She's got the goth gimmick as well. Um, she's more of a cruiserweight, and her aerial ability is quite good. But I think as an all-round, what she brings to the table, I think she's not quite as good as Miscreant. But she is still very good in her own, own right, and I do prefer her to quite a few of the other ladies that we've covered so far in the roster. Cole Rhodes is the colour commentator, completing the full women's announce desk. Perez Mendoza, the Puerto Rican princess. Uh, we saw her tag team partner, Lana Cortez, earlier. She's 28 years of age. She's a um, very small, regular wrestler. In ring, okay. Nothing spectacular. But again, part of a very talented roster. So unless you're remarkable, it's going to be quite difficult to stand out. So I think that's where maybe Perez Mendoza falls down a little bit. But she's still fun. Move on now to Queen B. 27 years of age, enhancement talent, the lowest rung on the ladder. Not bad in aerial and flashiness, but not particularly great, and everything else needs work, I think it's fair to say. Got the dancer gimmick, but I think, you know, with the talent on the roster, you could job her into being something quite useful to the company in general. So, I, I wouldn't be looking to get rid of her. Move on now to Raquel Sersiger. Now, Raquel Sersiger is uh, quite reclusive, shy by nature, but she has a luchador style. She's Canadian by birth, um, but again, she was influenced by the more the, the Mexican style of wrestling. Aerial and flashiness are both, you know, in high order, which is great, because, you know, that's what she's supposed to be proficient in. She's 31 years of age, underdog character, again, not remarkable, but someone you could have fun with. I mean, they're all relatively fun characters, I think, in this company. Referee Emma Bisto. And referee Tanya Jelly. Tara Jameson. Now she is the road agent. I think she was actually one of the top workers in WCW at a point in time. And the tag team partner of Ella Mae Pierce. However she um, shattered her leg following a botched superplex. And as a result she had to retire. But you know she was good at the uh, basics and psychology. And they kept her around as a road agent. So not everything ended horrifically for her. Well apart from her broken leg. I imagine that's got to be quite nasty. Move on now to the dead-faced Tiffany West. Tiffany West, country singer. Um, yeah. I mean, okay in the ring, but probably better suited for showtime. This is a, another one that I'd probably think, yeah, I could afford to get rid of her if needs be. Move on now to the fast-paced Trinity. Very small mid-card heel. Mysterious. She doesn't say much. She's kind of got the Matrix-style vibe with the, you know, the, the suit that she has on and everything. Um, very good in aerial and flashiness. So... I, I'm happy keeping around the mid-card scene. I'll probably see her elevating a little bit higher if necessary as well. So, fun to have around, Trinity. And finally, Victoria James, uh, the tag team partner of Lachey Peterson we saw earlier. Uh, Lachey Peterson is going to be the better of the two if it came to singles work. But uh, Victoria James, you know, serves a purpose. Not bad at brawling and got the badass gimmick that, you know, Kind of adds a harder edge to the Lachey Peterson character where it's all me, me, me. This is the muscle behind it. And they're also a tag team. So that brings us to an end of the WCW roster. Like I said, it's quite varied in terms of characters as well as their abilities. And they're all pretty damn good. So I think most of you would agree with me that it's a it's an entertaining roster to, um, to work with. Have a look at the storylines. I thought I had a few set up. We've got uh, Lindsay Adorn against Isla Porter. So the she ale female is going up against... Uh, Lindsay Adorn. We've got a very much a clash of styles there. I'd expect Lindsay Adorn to be the winner of that feud. The Little Shop of Horrors versus the Dark Princesses. So we've got uh, Lachey Peterson and uh, Victoria James taking on the champions of Miscreant and Misdemeanor. And LMA Pierce against Karma Kills. So Karma Kills, this is going to be the first massive name that the She Beast is able to defeat. And it might, you know, put Ella May Pierce into t retirement. But who's to say? She might stay around for a bit longer. Let's have a look at the titles. Again, these title belts were created by Mr. MJ Stark. Thank you very much, sir. WCW World Championship as held by Lindsay Adorn. WCW World Tag Team chi titles? titles as held by the Little Shop of Horrors, Misdemeanor and Miscreant. Okay.
Have a look at the tag teams. We have the Dark Princesses, Lachey Peterson and Victoria James, Las Guerreras, Lana Cortez and Perez Mendoza, The Little Shop of Horrors, Miscreants and Misdemeanor, The Wild Vines, Desert Rose and Heather Luck, and The Young and the Reckless, Alexis Young and Lauren Downs. Actually, that's a fun tag team as well. And it's clever. Play on words. Ooh. Okay. Have a look at the creative meeting. Franchise players. Lindsay Adorn, LMA Pierce, Fiona Niqua, Casey Callahan, Faith Richards. Next big things. Queen B. Very interesting. Hot prospects. Queen B. Caroline Quaid, Mimi LaRue, Lauren Downs and Heather Luck. Talk the Talk. Lindsay Adorn, Isla Porter, Nicole Rose, Mimi LaRue and Faith Richards. Showstoppers. Lindsay Adorn, Faith Richards, LMA Pierce, Fiona Niqua and April Home. Ring Generals, LMA Pierce, Fiona Niqua, Lindsay Adorn, April Home, and Helga Larson. Surprised Helga Larson made it onto that list, but good for her. Who's not Miscreant? Oh, sorry, who's hot Miscreant? Again, very interesting. Maybe she needs a singles push. Who's not? April Home, Desert Rose, Ariel Summers, Mimi LaRue, and Faith Richards. Time decline, no one. So LMA Pierce is an on time decline. That's great. And Hidden Gems, just some of the women that are available to be purchased, obviously. Purchased? That sounds really, really bad. Apologies there. That didn't. I didn't mean that as it sounded. Um, other women that can be brought into the company. Um, obviously, these are just a selection of what's available. Again, I'm making it sound like I'm selling whores. It's, I don't mean it, honestly. Anyway, Miranda Atwood, Chelsea, Celia Dunst, Sarah Knox, and Samantha Rain. Idiot, Scott. I can cut it. I won't. I'll tell you now, I won't, but I could. It's fine. It's funny. Adds a bit of, uh, bit of banter. Okay, right. Creative meeting? No, I've just done that. Cool, I can go to the show. Happy days. I believe it's a two-hour show, as we see Travis's Fry's beautiful beard. Travis's Fry's? Travis Fry's beautiful beard. Molson Play de Sports in Quebec is going to be the place we are going to be putting on a show. One and a half hours, so that's all right, actually. Good, because I was a bit worried, thinking two hours was a bit much. Not really sure what we're going to do here, but... Hmm. I'm tempted... Tag team match, Karma Kills on one side, and I don't think Karma Kills plays well with other human beings. So Karma Kills there. Another it'd have to be quite a high up hill. So let's filter on main eventers. Mm, don't want Lindsay Adorn there though. Faith Richards in the face. Fiona Niqua would work. That's a very much a contrast in the tag team there. And I want LMA Pierce on one side. And Faith Richards, she's on a down and out thing, so I might have Faith Richards take the loss to Karma Kills. It's going to be quite an important match, maybe the co-main event, so 17 minutes. Okay, Victor. Karma Kills, I want to build towards the Karma Kills LMA Pierce showdown. I might have, if I was doing a, a series out of this, the next week I might have a different tag team match, but I'll have LMA Pierce get the win over Karma Kills' his partner. Just spitballing ideas here. Faith Richards is going to lose. It will be an open match, though. Yep. Save. Cool. Right. Main event. It's going to be a Lindsay Adorn outing, almost certainly. Exclude the booked. Lindsay Adorn. Who? Casey Callahan could work. Casey Callahan could work. Casey Callahan, it is. Okay, so this is going to be. I don't know why I clicked that, to be honest with you. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Right. It's going to go 20, not that many. 21 minutes. So it's a more action based promotion, so I'm okay with letting it go longer than it might want me to. Lindsay Adorn's going to be the winner. Casey Callahan. Casey Callahan. I don't. I might have said that right twice, but I wasn't really listening to myself. If truth be told, people. Open match though. I'm not too fussed about the specific ending. That's fine. I don't want the title on the line. That's your main event. So we've got two quite lengthy matches. So we'll put some more filler-based activities here. We will have the Little Shop of Horrors gets a. Tag team win against Las Guerreras. We'll go about 10, I think. 
then I've got an angle in mind I want to do. So, just because she's on fire at the moment, Miscreant is going to get that. And Lana Cortez can take the fall. Open match there again, I'm not trying to squash anyone. Make everyone look competitive, that's fine, don't want the titles on the line. And before I forget, I'll put the angle in. I want a brawl. Actually, no, beat down in the ring, I think is what I want. Beat down in the ring, two versus two. So here we're going to have Shea Peterson and... I'm pretty sure it was the, this tandem going up against Miscreant and Misdemeanor. Come on. There we go. Okay. Don't need to go over the well, that's over the top. Six yeah, five minutes. Oh. Right. What other matches do we have? Let's have a singles encounter between I know what I want to do with some of these earlier on in the show, so I think Trinity I want to get win. Quite like the character. Against Raquel Serziger, because I just don't see her winning in this match. Fun clash of styles, though. Luchador against someone who's cruiserweighty. Is that a word? Well, it is now. I've made it a word. Trinity. Yes. Okay. Again, open match. I was tempted to have them go all out, because it'll be early in the show, but I think I'll leave it. I've booked 70 minutes. Okay, bad match. I want uh, a multi, multi outing. I don't know, what a multi outing! What the bloody hell is that? Okay, um, and I want it with some of the more dippy dippy people. Actually, I think I'll have Adila Baba get a win. Put Alexis Young in that mix and someone like Lauren Dow. No, because they're a tag team, so you'd think they'd work against Adila Baba. Queen B, maybe. This is definitely going to be the show opener. Six minutes. Dilababa to win. Don't mind who loses beyond that. Uh, script. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Nope. Close it. Save it. Cool. Okay. Another singles match here. We want Isla Porter. She's going to be going after the main title after all. Uh, to get a win over India. You know, formidable opposition, but not someone who's going to cause too many problems at the moment. We'll just go 12 minutes. Isla Porter to win. Open match. Beyond that, not too fussed. Okay, so we'll move that back to. I'm leaning there. Okay, right. And I've got three minutes left. Okay, so a three minute promo from our world champion, Lindsay Adorn, talking smack about Isla Porter. Just basic formulaic stuff. Just keep it within the limits of the show. Keep it there and we should be ready to rumble. So floating ant and deck. Or PJ and Duncan, depending on how you're looking at it. Run show. Well that already did better than I thought it was going to be. What? Words? Hmm. Okay. In a match that had an average crowd reaction and some decent in-ring action, Adila Baba defeated Alexis Young and Queen Bee in 6 minutes 1 when Adila Baba defeated Queen Bee by pinfall with an Arabian face crush. 3,486 people turned up for this. That's not bad. Okay. In a match that had some good action and average heat, Trinity defeated Raquel Sersiger in 8 minutes 35 seconds by pinfall with a blue pill plunge. About had a good crowd and good action, the Little Shop of Horrors defeated Las Carreras in 10 minutes 16 seconds when Miscreant defeated Lana Cortez by pinfall with a malicious intent. So the greys are going up, I expect it to dip slightly here, which it did. Dark Princesses attack the Little Shop of Horrors in the ring and leave them down and out, progresses that storyline. 
Isla Porter versus India. In about they had a good crowd and good action. Isla Porter defeated India in 12 minutes 14 by pinfall with a stout stunner. Lindsay Adorn cuts a promo hyping up her upcoming match with Isla Porter. B minus, very nice. Don't mind if I do. Here we go. In about they had great heat and great wrestling action. Karma Kills and Fiona Niqua defeated Ella Mae Pierce and Faith Richards in 60 minutes 34 seconds when Karma Kills defeated Faith Richards by pinfall with a Karma's a bitch. And the main event, oh, I was hoping that was going to get a B plus to be honest. In about they had great heat and great wrestling action, Lindsay Adorn defeated Casey Callahan in 21 minutes and 6 seconds by submission with an Adorn clutch. So that's a pretty damn good show. B minus still increased our popularity within five regions. I'm happy with that. I was hoping the main event was going to get a B plus, but you know, can't really complain. We've improved everything in terms of popularity, and it was a decent show all in all. There's no real stinkers on that entire card, so I'm happy with that. And that nicely brings us to the end of women's championship wrestling. I haven't decided which company is going to be covered yet in the next episode. There are only a few left though, so you know, slim pickings, but all fun promotions all the same. Hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe. You guys are doing fantastic with that recently, and also feel free to put comments. I'm happy to respond, you know, a bit of back and forth. We like that. Um, but th thank you again, guys, for watching this. Do appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you around.